Many thanks to Capture One for sponsoring this week's video. Is it possible to apply local adjustments and then refine them with highly targeted masks? That was the most common question that came out of my video in June, all about how I use Capture One to edit my landscape photos. And after answering as many of these questions as I possibly could, it quickly became apparent that a video on the topic was warranted. So if you're here just for the answer to the question, I can save you a little bit of time and tell you that yes, it's possible to create targeted local adjustments and masks inside of Capture One. And in this video, I'll show you the most common ways that I use them, how I apply them and refine them, and the problems that they solve for my editing workflow. So to jump right into it, this is a uh, an image from Zion National Park. I believe I captured this last March. There's a little bit of snow up here on the Watchman. A uh, very classic image. This is not taken on the uh, the vehicle bridge, however. You can no longer shoot from that location. This is on one of the, uh, the many pedestrian bridges that are along the Virgin River. But nevertheless, absolutely gorgeous scene. And this is the, the raw file here. You can see that there's a, a magenta color cast. There's definitely some white balance issues. The, the sky is very bright. The foreground and midground area is much darker. So I went ahead and, and corrected the color cast, corrected the white balance, and went ahead and balanced the overall scene. You can kind of see some of my adjustments right through here, but I won't bore you with all those details. But the, the sky, I definitely want to do a little bit of work on the sky. There's a lot of information in the sky that I really, really want to bring out, but I want to use local adjustments as opposed to using global adjustments because I don't want this to affect the, uh, the foreground or the midground. So I'm going to come over here to the uh, the layer section right through here. I'm gonna select new fill adjustment layer and I'm gonna select the, uh, the radial filter right through here. And let me just turn this off and I'm gonna make a, make sure I'm selected there, yep. I wanna make a massive radial filter across the sky here. I'm gonna hit the shortcut key M just to kind of turn that mask on. Kind of pull this back just a touch I think to about right there looks pretty good. I turn that off. I'm going to go ahead and reduce the exposure. And you guessed it. I mean, you knew exactly what was going to happen here because that filter is spilling over across the watchman and everything in the background. And we definitely don't want that to happen. So I'm going to come up here. I just want to turn on the uh, display grayscale mask. I find that that's the easiest way to add a, a, a highly targeted adjustment, or at least it's easier for me to see it that way. So I'm going to come up here to Luma Range. I'm going to select Luma Range. I'm going to turn or slide this all the way to the right because I want to pick up all those brighter tones. And I'm just going to start to slide this over to a point about there, maybe not that far over. Something to maybe about right there looks pretty good. I'm gonna use this end right here. This is kind of the fall off or kind of like a feather, if you will. So I think something about maybe about right here looks pretty good. I don't like masks to be absolutely perfect because light generally spills over a little bit. There's always light fall off. So sometimes when you create these masks that are 100% perfect and they end right at the edge, it just looks a little bit unnatural. So I like to try and create a little bit of fall off to account for the, the natural light spillover that generally occurs. And I think that that looks pretty good right there. So everything that's in white is going to receive this edit and everything that is in black is not going to receive this edit. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit apply. We'll hit the shortcut key to turn off that grayscale mask. And now we can start to apply our adjustments. So I'm gonna bring down the exposure a bit. Let's warm up that sky quite a bit to about right there. Maybe even add a little bit of magenta into that sky, to about like that. Let's name this layer up here, sky, so it's easy to remember. Uh, contrast, I always like to do something with the contrast with the skies here. Sometimes I increase it, sometimes I decrease it. I think for this situation, I'm going to decrease it. And I think that looks pretty good right there. Now, if we zoom in to, uh, this is kind of the, the classic situation that would cause these types of masks issues where you have a, a tree with very small branches or leaves breaking that horizon line. That's usually where you get, uh, where you see halos. But in this situation right here, you really don't see any, and I'm, I'm zoomed in a extreme amount. There's a tiny, tiny bit of haloing going on. Very, very little, but we can come back up here to Luma range. We can take this radius and bump it up a little bit and that's going to help solve any potential kind of haloing that is occurring. Zoom all the way out before and after. And I think that that looks pretty good. Is there any other adjustments I want to do here? Maybe boost the saturation up a little bit. What's really cool about these kind of sections here is you can kind of pull them out and just move them wherever you want. 
And if you can rearrange them, you can just kind of put them back. You can slide this one. If you want it down here at the bottom, you can do that. I always like to, I always put mine in order that I use them when I edit a um, an image, kind of going from the top to the bottom. But I always think that's pretty cool how you can just kind of pull these out and just kind of put them back wherever you want. Just kind of keep it highly customized for yourself. It's pretty neat. But I think that this is starting to look much, much better. Now, what I want to do is I want to focus this image a little bit more because the eyes, it, it is kind of flat light a little bit. There's not, it's not a super high dynamic, uh, lighting situation here. The sky looks good, but the rest of the image looks kind of flat because the light's not super, super interesting. But what I want to do is I want to focus the attention over to this area here. So I'm going to come back to the background and let's create another layer. So a new field adjustment layer. This time I'm going to do a linear gradient and I'm going to just pull it all the way up from the top, all the way up here. Hit the shortcut key M so you can see the area that's going to be impacted. And I'm just going to bring the exposure down just a little bit because I just want to create that natural transition zone from, you know, the darker foreground into the brightest area of the scene because I feel that that's going to give this image a little bit more depth, a little bit more focus, something to draw the viewer's eye through the photograph. And I think that that looks good right there. We can name this right here bottom. And then let's toggle the entire adjustment on and off. So this is where the raw file began. And this is where we're at right now. This is where we started right here. And this is where we're at right now. So a pretty substantial difference. And I could go ahead and add a little bit more, maybe another radial filter over th through this side here. But I think the photograph definitely looks a little bit more focused now. And I think there's a little bit of a direction for the viewer's eye to follow, which is definitely a good thing. So I'm gonna come over here to another image. I think this photograph right here is gonna be a good example of this. Oh, and before I do forget, if you are interested in checking out Capture One, there is a link in the description that can give you a free 30-day trial, along with a discount code for the first 100 folks that'll give you a 20% off discount as well. So be sure to check that out. Now for this photograph, what's pretty cool about this is, uh, let me come over here to Style Brushes. I mentioned this in my video. Uh, in June, I created these, uh, these custom style brushes. And for this one, I'm gonna use Saturation and Clarity. I wanna use the brush here. I'm gonna right click. I just wanna turn the flow up all the way and I'm just gonna paint. Let me hit the shortcut key M to show my mask overlay and I'm just gonna paint all around through here. You can tell that I'm not being super, super careful to stay within the lines. And as you can see with this photograph, it'd be next to impossible to you know, create a mask for this by hand, by painting very carefully. At least I could never do it. My hands are way too shaky and I'm not patient enough either. So I think that that looks pretty good right there. And if I hit the shortcut key M to turn off the mask, this uh, custom brush already has saturation and clarity built in. So if I turn this on and off, you can see what that did. It just kind of added that pop to the photograph, which is, which is the reason I, I created that style brush. Now, if I want to refine it even further, because when I turn this on and off, you can see that it's impacting the background area too because of that spillover right through there. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm gonna come up here to Luma Range. We're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull this all the way over to the right side and I'm gonna to start to slide this over. Let's, uh, let me hit Display Mask here. And let's kind of play with this fall off just a little bit. I think to about there, maybe refine it just a touch. I think that that is looking pretty good. There's a little bit of spill off there, but that's okay. I'm gonna hit apply and I'm gonna come up here to the erase just cause my OCD is, uh, it, this will bug me. So let me just reduce the size of this eraser and just hit it a couple times right through here. And I think that that looks pretty good. Let me turn the mask overlay off. And if we toggle this on and off now, you can see how good that that has done. And if I wanna re reduce the opacity of that layer, I can. And you can see that's the opacity right there of the layer. And I think to something about there looks good. I just really wanna make the flower really pop, really jump off. I don't want the eye to really pay attention to the background and we're gonna fix that in just a second as well. But I think that that is a pretty good starting point for this photograph. Now this area right through here is definitely a distraction for me. There's nothing interesting going on through here. So I really just wanna darken that area down. The, uh, the viewer's eye naturally avoids areas that are a little bit darker. So we're just gonna kind of reduce the exposure, maybe even pull down the saturation of those greens as well, just to kind of make it a little bit more invisible. So I am going to come up here, create another filled adjustment layer, but this time let's hit gradient and let's just draw a gradient right through here to about there. Let me hit the shortcut key M. Let me pull this back just a little bit because I don't want it to impact this area much at all. And I think that that looks pretty good. And then let's just reduce the overall exposure 
to about there. And maybe that, maybe, is that too far? Uh, let me try the saturation as well. Yeah, I think that that's starting to look a little bit better. Let me go up to here to uh, uh, undo. Oh, I must've hit an undo, customize toolbar. Um, undo redo, this is kind of cool. You can just kind of create this however you want, which is nice, done. Uh, undo, undo, um, yeah. I think I wanna make sure, I wanna reduce the saturation first because if I reduce the exposure first, I can't see how much I'm reducing the uh, saturation. So I think that that looks good. And now let's bring that exposure down a little bit to about that point and toggle this on and off. Yeah, that's much, much better. So now the viewer's eye is almost forced to look at the flower, which is by far the most exciting part of this photograph as well. It's a beautiful, beautiful flower. So by darkening down that background area, it just makes, it ensures that the viewer's eye isn't just dancing all over the screen. And I think that that looks good. If I want to reduce the, uh, you know, the opacity of that layer just a little bit, I can easily just kind of pull that back. But I think at 100%, that is looking pretty good right there. And if we go to the before and after, this is where we started and this is where we're at right now. Let me just go back to background so it removes those lines. So this is where we are at now and this is before. So after and before. Somehow I got my cadence of before and after wrong. This is before and this is after right here. So very, very easy to create highly targeted um, adjustments and utilizing layers. And there's a lot of cool different ways you can customize Capture One as well. And I think it absolutely does an incredible, incredible job with Fuji RAW files. It's something that I've never seen before and I absolutely love using it for that. So I do hope that answers the question. Uh, whether or not you can use layers or create highly targeted uh, uh, local adjustments and masks inside of Capture One. Uh, obviously, it's very simple to do. If you have any questions about how to do it, please leave me a comment below and I'll be sure to get back in touch with you as soon as I possibly can. And be sure to check out the link below as well if you don't use Capture One. Uh, might as well give it a free try. Like I said, the link below it gives a three, uh, free 30-day free trial along with that 20% off discount code for the first 100 people that use it. As always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends or your local uh, photo club. I would greatly appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel as well. Always helps the channel perform better, which is greatly appreciated by myself. And as always, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch this week's video. And I will see you all next Wednesday. Bye.